Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Impact Weekly. We have a fresh new question here. Um, This one is for someone who's brand new at the job. And the question is basically, I'm new at my job. What should my first 90 days be? Hmm. So, of course, we need to start by asking uh, who, who who's asking here. Let's yeah. let's let's start there. Uh, but but as we assume now that this is a customer success manager, uh, and we'll probably need to get back to how how should I start my first ninety days if I'm head of CS. But that's maybe not a head of CS might not even ask that question, right? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I when you when you get a question like this, it's it's almost always going to be from a CSM. Um, but I do think that would be very interesting, um, to talk about, you know, as, as a new head of customer success, what, what should you be doing in your first 90 days? So I think that's definitely something for another episode, but let's, let's go through this episode, assuming that, that a CSM asked this question. I think that's fair. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's, uh, I think it's, uh, um, a very interesting question and something that, more people should probably ask this, or at least try to find out what what should my ninety first ninety days be. A lot of people just jump on a new job and uh, uh, take it as it is. But to to look at it uh, uh, like what should my first ninety days be is, I think a very it's a very good question actually. For sure, um, this is one of those things that, um, yeah, if you don't think about it or you don't you know you're not you're not approaching, uh, your new, your new role, um, in, in this way, it does, it doesn't, it's not like it's wrong to not have this in mind, but I think it can just, it can help you in so many different ways. And, and what, and what we'll talk about today, um, will give you some of that, uh, hopefully, you know, give you that direction. But I, I do think this is something we just, that, that does need to be talked about more. Um, CSMs, especially, yeah. need to be what I say, you know, sort of control your narrative to the extent possible and yeah. going into a new, a new role. You, you, you need to know what you need to accomplish. Um, and, and very often to your point earlier, you know, it's, it's kind of like we're, we're almost just at the mercy of whatever is already in place, which may yeah. not be much. And, and exactly. then 90, 90 days down the road, you're, you're really not, <laughs> um, in a much better place than you were you know, f- fresh in the role. So yeah, hopefully we can give you some direction on, on that today and, and yeah. at least start may- maybe getting people to think more about this. I think that's, yeah. that's the goal. Yeah, uh, definitely. And I think in general, when you're new at the job, um, it is, I, I, I always tell uh, people who we, we hire that, the first, the first few weeks or even ninety days can be like a roller coaster when it comes to the confidence you have mm. in being able to do the job. Um, I think it's very common that you, in the beginning, yeah, this is not going to be that hard. Uh, you get to know everything, and then all of a sudden you, you're hit with more complexity and uh, ne- the next level of things, and then you kind of go down the roller coaster, and and if you keep at it you come up again and then maybe you go down another time so it's i think that's uh especially true uh in customer success that you will have this kind of roller coaster experience um so but let's uh yeah let's help this person and anyone new at the job on how to come out of it uh without throwing up <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, to, to continue the roller coaster analogy, I, I, yeah. I love that. And I mean, it's, you know, look, this is the first, I think really, if we think about it, you know, it's the, the first 90 days um, is, is really, it's setting the tone. Um, it, it, you know, I, I don't want to be so, so dramatic to say that it makes or breaks really your success in the role, but, you know, it is going to shape how you feel about about the role, how you feel about the company, um, 
how you feel about your chances of success in that role. So, I mean, this is really important stuff. So, you know, I think just at a high level, one of the things you want to do as a CSM going into a new role, and and again, this is not something that anybody necessarily tells you uh, to be thinking about is what is your goal for that first 90 day period? Like if you were to go forward 90 days and look back on your first three months in the, in the role, where would you like to be? Yeah. Like right there is something that if you would just do that, um, then you can, then everything else you can, you can start to put into place. But, but that is something that a lot of people don't do. And, and I I think those that are, that are really taking control of their career, taking control of, of their narrative, if you will. um, I think, they do this and they might just do it instinctually. They might do it because they, you know, had some career coaching or they had, you know, a mentor that kind of shared this with them. But most people haven't been given this, just that simple bit of advice, which is where do you want to be 90 days into your new role? So what's the goal? So think about that. I think that's a good place to start. Definitely. That's a good one. And and we uh, we also know that sometimes, especially if you're maybe the first customer success manager in, or we know there's not uh, there's not a lot of uh, foundation in place even. So it's even more important that you might have to do a lot of work here to to know where you where you want to be in ninety days. Um, and and that's something we're going to talk about more today. Exactly. I mean, th- this is interesting because I think you have t- probably two main like things that you're going to experience as a new CSM, a CSM in a new role, yeah. you're either going to have a situation where there's just no direction. Um, there's no established sort of onboarding process for you as a CSM, as a new employee in the company outside mm-hmm. of maybe, maybe there's some HR sort of onboarding things, but in terms of your role in, as a CSM, there's not a lot, or yeah. you're going to run into a situation where there is a a sort of defined process, but it's not very good. (laughs) Um, It it doesn't, uh, just in whatever way, it's not, it's not good. It's not effective. And so um, what we're going to talk about today will, will help in both of those situations, uh, I believe. Yeah, definitely. Um, And of course uh, there is, it's all always good to have the, I mean, whatever the company has uh, in general is, of course, uh, usually very good. But today we're going to focus in on what's important from a customer success point of view, of course. Exactly. So I think kind of jumping into that, um, we have there's there's really if you take those three those three months and you kind of break it down yeah. by each month, um, the way that. It, the way that we like to look at it is the first month is, and we'll go into each of these in more detail, but the first month is for sort of establishing. We call that establishing. That's exactly. where you're going you're gonna to establish your, your foundation. Then we go into month two, which is optimizing. So that's, yes. that's uh, you know, where we're, we're getting the processes down and, and we're, we're, well, we're optimizing. We'll talk about that. And then month three is accelerating. So if we think about that, we each each month essentially has a theme, establishing, optimizing, and accelerating. And again, we'll go into all of these in just a second, but kind of looking at it like that, now we break down that 90 days into 30-day chunks or three months yes. into, into one-month chunks. And all of a sudden, things start to fall into place a little bit easier um, I think when you have a little, little framework like this, so yeah. let's, let's go into each, each one. So month one, um, and again, you can take this 30, 60, 90 day plan. You can overlay it on an existing, uh, onboarding process, or you can, you know, or if you're going into a role where there really isn't one, this will be a good guide for you. Yeah. Um, if you overlay it on something that exists, this will help you maybe fill in any gaps. So like if, yeah. if they already have something in place, but it doesn't, really, you you feel like it's not doing everything for you, everything that you need. Having this framework will kind of help you see where the gaps are and then help you uh, figure out what you need to do to sort of fill those those knowledge gaps or those process gaps that are there. So let's jump into month one, establishing. Yes. And I think that's um, uh, sometimes, I think also looking at it 
in in these three steps also can help you not rush things right mm. i think that's one one of the common sort of mistakes or is that you're really hot in on your new job you want to prove yourself you want to show that you you have a lot of skills and know-how that you come from a background where doing similar things and that you kind of rush things um and and i think this that's why it's good to call it establishing because you need to establish a few things before you can take the the next step or to 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 accelerate or, or to optimize and accelerate as the second part so, uh, of this uh, 90 90 day plan so um i think we the, the, it's it's um it's good to uh, build the foundation uh, in this first month. For sure. I, I, I just need to key in on something you said there, which I think is really important. Um, you know, what I find is a lot of CSMs, and this is kind of a generalization, but you'll see this. And I don't think it's just, I don't think this is a CSM specific thing, but um, I think it's just when, when somebody goes through the interview process and they, um, you know, kind of play up their, you know, they're all their, all the good things about them, right? That's what you do, right? So you kind of, you, you kind of put yourself of over and then yeah. you get into the role and then there are things you don't know. And you feel yeah. like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I lied on my resume and I still got the job, you know, is, you know yeah. how you're feeling, but that's of course not true. What, you know, you have experience, you have relevant experience as a, as a CSM, but there's things that are specific to this unique relationship between you as a CSM, the product, uh, you know, and the customer yeah. that are different than what you did in, in your last role. And so you need to make sure that you're not um, falling into the, the, the negative trap of feeling like an imposter yeah. because there's things you don't know. You're not going to know everything that's specific to the, the unique relationship that you have with the customer in this, in this new role. Uh, so don't be afraid to speak up and, and say, look, I, I don't understand this. This doesn't make sense. This is not clear. Um, and yes. so I think having this very clear idea of, look, the first 30 days are all about establishing that foundation, understanding yeah. what the relationship needs to look like with the customer, understanding goals, goal setting, both for, you know, with customers, but also with, for myself and, and with management, um, learning about the product, all of that level setting stuff. Yes. It, you have to just first understand that you don't know these things and that's yeah. perfectly okay. So you have to exactly. be able to come in and, and, and learn. And nobody has any yeah. expectation that you would just all of a sudden know these things because no. you have customer success experience. And if you kind of skip this or, or, uh, like try to hide this like gap if you like uh, uh, and it comes down that you don't know these things six months down the road <laughs> then it's going to be a problem but the yes. first month you have all the opportunities in the world to to ask the quote-unquote dumb questions and and really try to understand things um so so take this opportunity to really uh build this foundation for yourself because if you have that, it's going to be much easier um, doing this, the the more advanced things that you want to you want to get to later. It, absolutely. So, I think some things that you can you can do is sort of um, you know establish almost progress milestones for yourself, or just have some questions that you want to answer. Yeah. You know, you can sort of rate your foundation. How well do I understand the product? How well do I understand the the ecosystem where the product fits in? How well do I understand the customer and what we're trying to, what the customer is trying to achieve? Um, all the, you know, just, you want to have some sort of checks that you can yeah. make along the way to say, am I making the, the, the right progress here? Um, and, you know, again, just if you have questions in this, in mm. this, especially in this first 30 day period, if there's things you don't understand, you have to speak up, you have to advocate yeah. for yourself. And exactly. There's no, again, nobody has any delusions that you're going to just know everything about the, you know, the, the product or uh, the customer relationship or how we engage with customers in this company. You just started. Yeah. So you shouldn't put that kind of pressure on yourself either. 
no, I think those are great. Uh, and, and another very practical thing here is that try to to do it yourself. It's it's very easy that you kind of in the beginning you sit next to someone that shows you everything. Um, and and uh, I, I I know myself, and I think that's that the best way to learn is to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. So, um, like during this period, people will show you a lot of things, but do them yourself. Write down things. Uh, work with it if you uh, if there's a demo account or if it's in a you know whatever you can do try things out to do it yourself i think that's yeah accelerates your learning a lot so i love that yeah i mean exactly so even if there aren't training scenarios to work that you're being you know that you're being provided if there isn't um if these if these opportunities are not being given to you by your your leadership when you first start yeah do it yourself that's I mean, exactly. I, I think that's a fantastic. Uh, piece and I of think advice. in the general now, and and I think of course there are companies with super uh, well established onboardings, and you get a lot of time with people. But in general, um, you kind of get thrown into the deep end <laughs> and, and need to figure out things. Uh, you have of course time, but and you have people, but but. Uh, uh, you have to take ownership of this. I mean, that's our main point here as well, too. You need to to look at this 90-day period. What, sh- where, sh- where do I want to be after the 90-year period? And then you have to kind of own own the way uh, mm-hmm. to get there, basically. Yeah, and I think this is an uh, we kind of alluded to it earlier, but but making sure that you are are setting goals for yourself, like we like we said, you know, wh- where do you want to be or need to be at the end of 90 days? But then making sure that you're, you're sharing those or, or otherwise sinking on those goals with your, with your manager mm. so that we're on the same page. So yep. that, that at the end of 90 days, when you know, you, you've gotten to this point, like your manager knows that that was what success was, uh, what you know, you've established as success for you either on your own or, or you've worked with them on that, but we're all on the mm. same page. Like, this is where you needed to be because I think mm. a, a thing that does happen a lot is just, you know, misalignment with, yeah. with the management on exactly. where, Good. where yeah. they expect me to be and where I actually can be <laughs> and what's reality. So communication yeah. is everything here. And if they haven't yeah. established goals for you, then you establish them for yourself and you communicate those and get, get their buy-in. Um, yeah. And it's huge. I would, I would say if you, if you come to your manager and say, this is my, my view where I want to be after uh, 90 days, uh, they will be most likely surprised that someone, uh, that yeah. they won't, won't be expecting that. So that's going to be, I would say, you you will uh, you pro, you will get a good a lot of goodwill from just bringing it up, and then maybe you get some feedback on that goal that they see. Yeah, that that's great, but you should also think of this. And you, that, I mean, but just to bring get bring that discussion up will will do a lot. I mean, that's. Yeah, there's, there's nothing that there's nothing, there's no downside to that. <laughs> That's no, only no, going to no. only going to be a positive. Um, okay, so I think, you know, month one, it's all about, it's all about, you know, sort of that, that foundation, uh, establishing yeah. that foundation month two. Now, this is where you get yes. into to optimizing. So let's talk yeah. about that. So yeah, so month two, here is where you bring in your 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 skills, what you know from previous jobs, what you see as opportunities to improve in this. Uh, this is where you can can um, have you done the, laid the foundation. You now have a good see, you have a good understanding of the product. You have a good understanding of what of the customer base, the type of customers you have, what they're trying to achieve. Uh, and here's where you can start looking at what can I now improve here um, and what can I optimize um, so I think this is where you where you can uh, start bringing uh, more to the table internally in the company right yeah and I mean I want to be be clear that we're not necessarily talking about coming in and saying hey here's a bunch of things that we need to change but this is where you this is really the phase of this of just just within the context of this ninety day period, it's it's a sh- you know it's still just a, a one month phase, but it's where you can really start bringing in, as Johan said, your your experience. Right? Yes. This is this is where your life experience, your experience as a CSM, your experience in other roles before you moved over to being a CSM, whatever that is, 
can can you can start taking that and and overlaying that or applying that to this this new CSM role, and you can look at areas of of improvement. You can look at places yeah. to be more efficient, um, or you can just look at taking whatever playbooks or or processes that are in place and making sure that you fully understand how to yes. work those things as efficiently as possible. Yeah. So uh, sometimes what's missing. Um, when maybe in the first 30 days you're, you're given access to, to the playbooks. Cool. Yeah. But you know, again, it's not to say that, that everybody's doing everything wrong. I don't mean it like that, but a lot of times things are just what's in place are not either described properly or they're just not built to be super efficient. So what you can be doing here, because you still have sort of fresh eyes from, you know, not being, uh, in, you know, uh, sort of indoctrinated yet into yes. the way things are done. You still have the ability to really apply your, your previous experience to things. And you can take a look at these processes that are already defined, already in place and figure out how to do them more efficiently. Um, yeah. And I think that's, that's a huge benefit to being new in a role. Yeah. So we're not trying to change anything. No. We're just trying to figure out how can we optimize that and get, and be the most efficient in our role as possible. And I think this is just, just just a really fantastic use of that, that second month. Yes. And this can be, whether you're been a customer success manager in your previous role, uh, then you can bring in what, what has been working for you in that sense. But you can also be that you come from um, the customer side and you bring mm-hmm. in that part to this. So even if it's your first customer success manager role, you have experience uh, that can be relevant. And as, as you said, Lincoln, usually uh, there is stuff in place, but you need to adopt that and you need to evolve that. Uh, and that's uh, the second month here to be, make it yours as well. Exactly. Yeah. And again, I think just the benefit is you, you still have, you're, you're still a little bit of an outsider and, yeah. and you know, you can take advantage of that. Um, you can't do that too early though. I mean, you can't do that in the first month generally because you don't know enough about what's going on. But once you have that foundation set, you can start optimizing. And then, you know, from there, yes. uh, we can, we can get in, you know, we move into month three and we can start accelerating. And I think this is, this is where, um, you know, really start to make some good progress. Um, so let's talk about accelerating. Right. So, um, have you have when you have the foundation you understand the customer you understand the product and how it how it fits together uh you have started looking at how you should approach things and uh optimized around that and now it's time to actually start do- hitting the ground doing the things that you that you uh, want basically t- taking the actions that's going to lead you to where you want to be as you this goal you set for yourself Exactly. So this is where we might start to set some operational um, metrics, uh, some goals for the things that we're that we're doing. So, you know, if if we were, you know, once we've once we started optimizing, uh, we're starting to work actually work with customers now. This is where yes. we might want to start setting some some operational goals for ourselves, where we're trying to have a certain number of meetings, or we're trying to send a certain number of emails, or we're trying to 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 do a certain number of um, whatever the actions are, um, we're yes. trying to spend this much time preparing for meetings. We're, you know, and and again, this is going back to what we did in, in month two. You know, optimizing optimizing yeah. is always going to be a part of whatever we do. But basically, mm-hmm. what what we want to do is is try to see what we can, what we really can accomplish with everything that we've done in month one and two. Start putting that into practice and and figuring out what what is the what pace can we set for ourselves? Exactly. What velocity can we can we attain here? And it's a little, it's kind of like you know pushing yourself a little bit after you've you know you, you've been training for a couple of months. Now it's time to kind of push yourself and see what you can do. Yes. Um, and I think it's it's almost a uh, it's it's kind of it's going to test. Uh, it's, it's a test for yourself. It's a test for that preparation, um, and a test for the work that you've put in. But if you do all these things. Um, you know, you, 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 you go through the process of establishing that foundation, you go through optimi- op- an optimization process, and then you move yeah. into accelerating and you test yourself. Your first 90 days 
on the job are going to be uh, incredible. They're going to be incredibly yes. productive. You're going to set yourself up for success. And I think uh, that's just something that we don't often do deliberately. And yeah. I think if we can just approach this, these first 30, 60, 90 days in a very deliberate fashion, um, yeah. I think you, things are going to be so much better for you. Uh, and you, and, and think you, of and it in these sequences so you don't rush into accelerating and getting out and meeting customers too soon. We kind of want to do that because that's we know that's where the job actually is. But building, we're building to that, and that's yes. uh, that's when you're uh, ex- that's what we call it accelerating because you you kind of you build up to it, and then you can start uh, act uh, taking the actions that you yeah. that that the job is all about, of course. I mean, you, you said it a couple of times, and I just I want to I want to emphasize that because what you said is 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 brilliant. You know, we want to make sure that you're not uh, you're not trying to skip ahead. Yeah, you know, you're, you're. This is a process. And it's not really, right. you know, time flies. 90 days is not really that long. So, no. um, you know, I know I know the impulse is to come in and just show how great you are instantly. But you can't do that if you don't have this other context. So follow this process. And soon enough, you will get to show just how amazing you are. But yeah. you'll do it in a way that's that's actually uh, sustainable and and something that, that is, is really a positive for everybody involved. So like, like you said, don't, don't skip ahead. This is a exactly. process, follow it and, and you're good. So with that, what, that, what, what are three, what are three yes. very concrete things that, that we can wrap up with? Yeah. So I think what we started off with the number one thing here is to th- just think of these 90 days, uh, start there and set the goal for yourself. Where do I see myself? after 90 days uh 90 days flies by quickly so uh you need to have a clear picture where where am i after these 90 days what 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 am i doing how how am i conducting myself uh all those things have a clear vision there and a goal for yourself i think um the second one would be to take what you just said having that that clear goal for yourself and make sure you establish that with your leadership. So, um, again, they may have a goal for you already. Great. Maybe you can enhance that with, with whatever you've come up for your, come up with for yourself, or if they don't have a goal for you, you can take that to them and say, this is what I think, you know, what I want to see come out of the first 90 days, but whatever it is, you want to make sure that you're in sync with your leadership. So everybody knows what success is for you after the first 90 days on the job because sometimes that's not in place and then we how do we know just like we say with our customers if we don't know what their goal is how do we know if they're successful same thing exactly for you so yes. establish your goal with your leadership and what would be a third thing you the third thing here is to you take charge of your plan and if if there is one great but if there isn't one uh, use this use your make your own plan and if you have, if there is an onboarding plan for you, make it fit uh, to the established process, uh, but but make it yours. Perfect. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.